The Scoop on Ice Cream. Written by Bonnie Williams, illustrated by Scott Burroughs. Chapter 1, The Origins of Ice Cream. You know lots of things about ice cream, right? You know it's delicious and you know your favorite flavor. You also know that ice cream comes in cups or cones and that you eat it with a spoon or just lick it right off the scoop. But what do you know about the history of ice cream? Do you know who invented it and when? Or which United States president loved ice cream? Today, if you have a hankering for ice cream, it is easy enough to find some. You just buy it from the supermarket or go to your favorite ice cream parlor and order a scoop or two. But did you know it wasn't always so easy to satisfy your craving? And do you know where these scoops came from or how they were made? That's where this book comes in. By the time you finish reading this book, you will know the answers to these questions and many more. You will be a history of fun stuff expert on ice cream. The history of ice cream is not an easy one to piece together. Sometimes it seems about as clear as a bowl of ice cream soup and just as messy. What historians do know for sure is that frozen treats have been enjoyed for the last 2,000 years. In ancient time, snow and ice were combined with flavors like honey, fruit, and juice. Nero, a Roman emperor who ruled ancient Italy from the year 54 to the year 68, would make his slaves run up high into the mountains for ice. When the slaves returned, they added fruit and juice to the ice to make something we'd recognize today as a sushi or Italian ice. The Chinese were probably the first to mix ice and snow with milk, making a creamy dish that closely resembles the ice cream we know and love today. There is a record of, fr record of frozen dairy treats made of milk, flour, and camphor as far back as the Tang Dynasty that began in the year 618 and ended in 907. Camphor is the substance that comes from the camphor tree. It has a very strong smell. Today, camphor is used in mothballs, gels to help with cold, and insect repellent. Just don't eat any of those. It took centuries for ice cream to make its way from China to Europe. There are many legends about how it did so. One of the most famous ones involves a man you may have already heard of named Marco Polo in the 1200s. He traveled from Italy to China. Some say that he returned with recipes for ice cream, but there is no evidence to support this. Regardless, by the 1600s, ice cream was enjoyed throughout Europe, and in the later half of the century, it was being served at the Royal Court of England. Not long after this, ice cream arrived in the American colonies. Chapter 2. Almost Modern History Ice cream has been a part of the American way of life since the very beginning even before the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. When the states were still colonies of England, the well-to-do would serve ice cream at parties and other events. One night in 1744, the governor of Maryland Colony served ice cream after dinner. We know about this because one of his guests was so amazed by the dessert that he wrote about it in a letter. This is the oldest record of ice cream in the Americas. Our founding fathers and mothers had a real sweet tooth for ice cream, too. In 1790, George Washington was a year into being the first president of the United States. That summer, he and his wife Martha spent $200 on ice cream. That's a lot of money. But it's even more when you think about how much that would be worth today. Unfortunately, it's hard to calculate the value of money from that far back. But we do know that. As little as 100 years ago, $200 was worth more than $4,700. How much ice cream do you think you could buy with that much money? Another founding father and a third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, is known for having done many things. He wrote the Declaration of Independence and started his own university, the University of Virginia. But did you know that he also loved ice cream? He kept a recipe for vanilla ice cream written in his own handwriting. He discovered this recipe in France, where he was an ambassador bef before he became the American president. When he returned to the United States, he would often serve ice cream at his parties. If you had been seated at Thomas Jefferson's table, there's a good chance you would have eaten ice cream based on this recipe. Until the mid-1800s, making ice cream was hard work 
that took hours to be done by hand. Then in 1843, a woman named Nancy Johnson patented the first ice cream maker that made the work a bit easier. Here's how her machine worked. You'd start with two cans, one smaller, one larger. In the smaller can, you would add your basic ice cream ingredients, like the milk, sugar, and flavoring. Then you would add ice and salt to the larger can and fit the smaller can inside. Next, you use the crank to turn the ingredients into the smaller can. This made the mixture smooth and creamy, while the ice in the larger can can simultaneously froze it. After about 20 to 45 minutes of cranking, you would enjoy your ice cream. Sound like fun? If you want to make ice cream the old-fashioned way, there are companies that still sell ice cream makers based on Nancy Johnson's original design. Because of Nancy Johnson's invention, more people were able to experience the joy of eating ice cream. After turning, another turning point came a few years later in 1851, when a man named Jacob Fussell opened the first ice cream factory. As you might expect, his business boomed, and he soon opened up other factories. For the first time in its long history, ice cream was being manufactured on a large scale. To this day, Jacob Fussell is known as the father of the ice cream industry. Chapter 3. The Scoop on Scoops. Cones, Sundays, and more. With ice cream available to everyone, the stage was now set for classic ice cream dishes to take shape. And speaking of taking shape, you might not believe it, but there was a time when the ice cream cone didn't exist. It's hard to pinpoint exactly who invented the cone. The best evidence shows that there were a number of people who independently came up with the idea of eating ice cream out of edible cones. However, cones weren't popular until the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904, where many vendors sold them. After that, there was no turning back. The ice cream cone was here to stay. What about ice cream sundaes? Like the invention of the ice cream cone, the origin of the ice cream sundaes is up for a debate. Some believe that it was invented in 1881 in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, when chocolate sauce was dribbled on top of scoops of ice cream. Others say it was 1892 in Ithaca, New York, when cherry syrup and a cherry were added to dishes of ice cream. In both stories, the dish was named after the day, Sunday, on which it was either invented or often served. Today, there's a friendly rivalry between Ithaca and Two Rivers about the true birthplace of the Sunday. Last but not least, what about ice cream novelties? No frozen section of a grocery store would be complete without ice cream sandwiches, pops, and bars. How and when did they come about? The first ice cream novelty was vanilla ice cream covered in chocolate shell, known as the Eskimo pie. It was invented in 1920 by a high school teacher in Iowa who also sold ice cream. He got inspired by an eight-year-old customer who couldn't decide between buying a chocolate bar or ice cream. Since both are delicious, the teacher came up with a way of combining them. Chapter 4. Ice Cream Today As you know, you can find ice cream everywhere these days. It is so much a part of our culture that when immigrants arrived on Ellis Island in the early 1900s, they were served ice cream. Today, almost 10% of milk, milk production in the United States goes into manufacturing of ice cream and every flavor and type imaginable. The ice cream industry makes a profit of $10 billion every year. How does the ice cream industry make so much money? It's because Americans love ice cream. The average American eats about 80 cups of ice cream every year. Depending on the size of your scoop, that's two to, or four scoops every four and a half days. Ice cream has been so popular that in 1984, Ronald Reagan, the 40th president of the United States, named July as National Ice Cream Month. Every year, the official National Ice Cream Day is the third Sunday of July. Do you know what the most popular flavor of ice cream is in the United States? The answer won't surprise you. It's vanilla, followed by chocolate. Combined, they make up about 50% of ice cream sales. Which of those two flavors do you prefer? Do you have another favorite flavor? Do you know which flavor is your best friend's flavor? As you can probably imagine, ice cream isn't just popular in the United States. People in other countries love ice cream too. But what are some flavors around the world? 
In Japan, there's an ice cream flavor made with squid ink. And you can find ice cream topped with caviar, also known as fish eggs, and France. But not to be outdone, the United States also makes its share of unique flavors. You can find pizza flavored ice cream, bacon flavored ice cream, and even garlic flavored ice cream. Would you eat any of these flavors? Can you think of other flavors you've never heard of but want to try? Congratulations, you've come to the end of this book. You are now an official history of fun stuff expert on ice cream. Go ahead and impress your friends and family with all the cool things you know about the world's coolest treat. And next time you take a lick off your scoop of ice cream, think about the years of history that went into it and enjoy. 